All right, joining us on the podcast today, live and in person, Chris Moore with IX Systems, VP of Engineering. Oh, glad to be here. This was this was fun. It was a nice little drive. It was pretty this morning, driving up from Tennessee up here to Ohio. I can't tell you how excited we are to, as much as I like the other people that work here, and mm-hmm. I see Kevin and, and now Lucy and Alex and Adam on a day-to-day basis, it's really nice to see another face that's not those four guys or my family, you know? <laughs> well, absolutely. And if you're ever down our way, we'll return the favor. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's see. We go lately to, to uh, Nashville a lot. Okay. We've been having lots of trade shows. I don't know so what Nashville hours away from us well, well I, do you know anything about that what nashville has done to get uh it's five or six lately yeah it's just a really growing burgeoning city right now a lot of people relocating there from the west coast so it's it's grown a lot in the last 10 years and great Knoxville, I'm, I'm sure well, that's a, i'm sure that's, that's what nashville mixed, wanted to mixed see. blessing right <laughs> <laughs> yeah things were going okay yeah yeah and now the country music's like uh, alt pop rock or something i'm not a huge country fan so that part doesn't really wow oh, no, so what's no. going on in knoxville uh, Knoxville's a little smaller city. It's about a million plus in kind of the regional area there. Um, yeah, not a lot of tech industry there, although that's where now our IX uh, second office is located, which is great. Yep. And is that in your basement or is it? No, in, we have real, an office in Maryville, which is a little suburb of Knoxville, about 20 minutes south, uh, 30, 35 people there on average. Obviously, with fewer, fewer the coronavirus there. thing right now, not so many there in person working from home. But uh, yeah, definitely an important part of our office. A lot of our dev teams there. Okay, so that is interesting. You keep a lot of dev there. Mm-hmm. What What's the rest of the dev infrastructure look like? So um, a lot of the infrastructure there is a couple labs, our dev environment, our build system, CI, CD, uh, some hosting there. We, we kind of ping pong host between there, a colo, and then our San Jose okay. facilities as well. Cool. And then we have support team as well. A good chunk of our support teams in the Knoxville nice. area. And so before you came, you said, hey, can I bring anything? Yep. And I said, let's bring some some <laughs> local IPAs. So tell me tell me what we've got here. This is, I don't know what to make of this. Yeehaw! I asked a few guys beer. from the office, like, what do you guys recommend for a good local IPA? And you know, nothing says Tennessee more than Yeehaw. Fine Southern beer, <laughs> Yeehaw IPA, six point seven percent. Brewed and canned by Yeehaw Brewing, Johnson City. Yeah. I mean, Johnson that is, City's a couple hours up the road, but it's still Tennessee, so that counts. That's spectacular. And this <laughs> other one, this one's got more of a 70s yeah. uh, hippie sort of uh, fluffy letter uh, bell-bottom yeah. feel to it. A little the, more interesting visually, for sure. That's local. <laughs> local this, in so town. This is Black Horse Brewery. Mm-hmm. IPA, now this is a 7.8. This will be perfect for uh, unwinding after oh, this yeah, day of absolutely. IX systems. absolutely. Absolutely. But... Wait, this one even has directions. Open Uh-oh. can, oh, place wow. near nose, and gently inhale to get the aroma of the uh, Sriracha, Ace Citra, Simcoe, <laughs> Cascade hops, working together in perfect harmony. Drink, enjoy, recycle can. Wow. Well, we'll. Uh, Do people really read those and follow the directions? I, I, I don't know. Thankfully, I was doing it right, right the whole time. Right, good. <laughs> <laughs> I was drinking and then recycling the can. Yep. Yeah. Speaking of recycling, our our garbage just. Got picked up uh, last week or uh, yesterday, the day before, and it's always embarrassing. I don't know how it works in your neighborhood, but we've got the big tote for the mm-hmm. garbage, then the other one for the recycling. Every time it's it's full, the lid's a little cracked open, and all you see are wine and beer bottles on top of it. I mean, <laughs> and then they dump it. If you're ever there to hear ours specifically yep. get dumped out, it's the smashing of glass yep. together. Yep. It's a uh, not a great sign yeah, to our, send to the our rest neighborhood, of the neighborhood doesn't have the recycling bin, so it's all in the one bin, and yeah, yeah, it's a mess. That's Tennessee for you. <laughs> yep, yep. All right. So as much as these guys want to hear about um, drinking and recycling uh, yeah, habits, absolutely important. You've got other things going on at IX. We do, and I don't. I'm not sure where to start because I, I kind of want to start with scale because you aggravated so many people this well, uh, this week. aggravated or excited depending on their <laughs> point of view. Okay. But it was a big week. Okay, and then uh, we also have the True NAS core free NAS True NAS coming mm-hmm. together. Yep, and that's pretty cool too. Mm-hmm. And that's a little older announcement. So why don't we start with that? Sure. What's going on? Okay, so a lot of our you know, listeners and fans who've been using FreeNAS for years know about how we have FreeNAS. That's popular. Lots of folks run that at home, but we've always had TrueNAS, and that's the business side. That's that's our enterprise product. That's what you buy. You know, go buy an M50, M40, X Series, whatever, and you get TrueNAS Enterprise with some enterprise features. So we've had this 
dichotomy between the two forever, basically, mm-hmm. where you have the free free NAS product. Now, how free NAS is a decade old or more? Getting close point? to, I think, 10 years at this okay. point. Yeah, I don't remember the specific year now, but uh, it's been around a while for okay. sure. Um, but anyway, that presented a challenge for us, honestly, because we're basically releasing two products that are virtually the same. Obviously, the enterprise has some more things in it and some additional testing and such, but it means two sets of QA, two sets of documentation, two sets of code in some cases, mm-hmm. you know, where we're having to merge them together to build Trunaz. So there was a lot of duplicated effort going on. It just meant everything you did, you did twice. Right. Which, you know, small team, that takes a toll after a while. That's a, a lot to do. And, you know, it means one sometimes suffers, you know, FreeNAS might suffer on the QA side because we're spending more time in the enterprise and we don't want it to be that way. Mm-hmm. So starting with 12, we made the decision, you know what, the FreeNAS name also sometimes sends the wrong message to a lot of folks who think, oh, because it's free, it's cheap or it's less not capable or less something. capable right. or it's not real enterprise grade, which is just not the case at all. FreeNAS is through and through enterprise. Mm-hmm. So uh, with 12, we took the opportunity to rebrand it. So everything is becoming TrueNAS. FreeNAS becomes TrueNAS Core, which is everything FreeNAS is. There's no, we're not taking a step back in the sense that it's not open source or you're losing features or anything like that. It, it is a, what it is branding. today. It's, it's a, a branding, branding thing. thing. Yeah. yeah, but it coming with that is that we're releasing one image now. So when you go download TrueNAS and install it, you're getting core by default, but that same image, same code, same everything is also enterprise. So once you apply it on the IX hardware, on the X series or M series, put the license key on it, it just flips a couple logos around, the enterprise features get unlocked, and great, you're now on enterprise. All right, I wasn't going to bring it up, but you said the L word, logos. I know you've got (laughs) some new stuff. We put it in our our promo for the... uh, uh, the live cast that mm-hmm. we're actually going to do after this. So yep. in terms of sequence, we're doing the podcast. Uh, what is it? Thursday afternoon now. We're going to yep. do the live broadcast at 4. The podcast will drop uh, tomorrow. So there's a little bit of a sequencing thing. Mm-hmm. But it's all still very exciting. The logos, um, the shark, he's, he's gone. So the shark's been around a long time. And we believe we'll probably have him make appearances elsewhere in the UI. We're talking about Easter eggs. Using okay. the shark. We love our shark logo. There's nothing wrong with that. Does the shark have a name? Was it? Uh, no, I don't think we ever christened it with okay. a name. You know, Sharky, maybe. You know, it was knows, super right? creative. It's not <laughs> quite, super creative, right? Not quite Bodie McBoatface, <laughs> right? but okay. <laughs> but no, we're, we're talking about maybe having to make some appearances as Easter eggs, either in the UI, maybe in the documentation, you know, TBD. But you know, we'll have some fun with it. There's no reason not to. A little ASCII shark in the CLI. Yeah, why not? Why not? <laughs> well, we, we technically have some of that in the bootloader now. There's a little shark fin. Ah, so, perfect. Yeah, there you go. So before this uh, this pod, we were working together to take our system, which was on 11.3. Mm-hmm. So that's what we used for the Asegra work. Um, and we were starting to think about what we do next on uh, on FreeNAS. And someone had the idea, well, why don't we just go to the TrueNAS core product? Sure. And uh, I don't know who suggested it, but maybe I did. It was a great idea is all I know. Somebody so, had a good idea yeah. sometime. So you know, we went through the upgrade process. We mm-hmm. actually recorded that. And maybe we'll do something with that video too. It took... 10 minutes. So what'd you do? I don't even think we were paying attention the whole no, time. I might've we finished talking. earlier. <laughs> yeah. So, so you, that process really is as simple as direct it to the download. Yeah. Snag the download, apply reboot cycle once or twice. Yeah, and then you're done. Good to go. Yeah. So basically the biggest thing is when you're first uh, going to the update page, we have a concept of trains in mm-hmm. FreeNAS and TrueNAS. So trains are a particular major release. So 11, 11.3, for example, is its own train, right? And then when we go and come out with 12.0, you're going to go and switch to the 12.0 train. Okay. That way you can you know pick when you're ready to make a major upgrade. So you pick that, you hit apply, you know, go grab a drink, grab a cup of coffee, come <laughs> back, back, and you're done. And that's that. So Go grab a Black Horse Brewery yeah. IPA. Sponsored they, they by. They didn't sponsor. <laughs> that would have been nice if I thought that far ahead. <laughs> okay. So we're at 11.3 now. So is it is there an 11.4 release? Are there any other point no. releases? So 11.3 will be the last of the 11 series. That's okay. based on the FreeBSD 11 train as well. Right. And so when you go to 12, you're getting new kernel, FreeBSD 12. That's kind of where the numbers come from okay. there. So 12.0 will be the successor to 11.3. Okay. So what are you excited about in 12? What do you, what's got the most? I know, oh, and I don't, yeah. have you even shared everything yet? That's we've out? we've published most of the things. Okay. There's a lot of people running the nightly. 12 is pretty feature complete so right now. So they're seeing a bunch of stuff. Yeah, yeah. In. It's, it's feature complete in the sense that we're just doing QA now. So mm-hmm. all the features are in. 
the biggest work we spent on 12 and you know, why we took a little extra time was bringing ZFS up to speed. So ZFS on Linux has been moving ahead for the last couple of years. A lot of new features have been landing there. And we took the time with 12 to start bringing those back and bring FreeBSD to the table as well. So we could run the same version of ZFS as mm -hmm. ZFS on Linux, which means we get things like native data set encryption. That's a big one. I've wanted that for years and that's finally landing in 12. Okay. So the ability to go and just add data sets ad hoc at will, put different encryption keys on them. And uh, when you replicate, they stay encrypted, even mm -hmm. on the remote side. So you don't necessarily have to trust the remote side. You don't have to ship the, the key to the remote side. Well, that's, that's a, big, a big deal. That's a big deal for using yeah. a service provider or some mm -hmm. other outside target because we want to get a copy off-site. Yeah, right? absolutely. And that off-site may not be in my control. It may not be in your control. Probably or maybe, isn't in many cases. Yeah, maybe you don't. You can't verify their security measures. You, you just don't want to take the chance. So you just send it over encrypted and leave it that way. And you know, you're good. You can right. even restore it fully encrypted without bringing the keys over, which is great as well. Okay. So, and that's a pristine one-to-one -one copy of everything that's on your system. So, because it's ZFS level replication. All right. What else is new? Um, so we have that uh, on the enterprise side, writing KMIP support. So KMIP is for key management. So if you're in a little bit bigger shop, usually you might be using a KMIP server, which is managing your credentials and doing auditing of who's unlocking what and when and where and all that. Um, KMIP allows us to log in and, and authenticate against a KMIP server and we'll, it'll handle all the key exchanges. That'll be used for things like said drives or the native encryption I just mentioned as well. Before we get too far down the road, because you mentioned enterprise and mm -hmm. I was talking core before as yeah, we look at yeah. FreeNAS going to TrueNAS core. Just real quick for those maybe that haven't followed mm -hmm. closely yet, what's the difference and how do you delineate those? So enterprise is what you get when you buy the IX products or appliances. So if you get an X series, you get an M series, you, you'll get a license key to go with that, which makes it enterprise. That's going to unlock certain features like HA. That's really one of the biggest things about the right. system. So you have the dual controllers, um, enclosure management, visual enclosure management. That's a big deal. And that's been uh, that's been newly added to 12 as well for the enterprise side. Uh, proactive support, so depending on your support level agreement, we can have alerts get sent back to our support team at IX, you know, mm -hmm. give you the heads up when we see a drive starting to flake out and get you a new drive. You know, those kind of uh, features, fiber channel is another one. So, you know, there's a handful of vCenter plugin is another thing you can get on the enterprise side. So there's a there's some specific things that you'll get on the enterprise side. Speaking of fiber, is that big for these deployments or what do you see in there? It depends on the customer. Some customers already have it deployed and so it's, easy. it's just easy. They want to go and keep rolling with what they have. So it makes sense if you invested in the infrastructure. Yeah, if you're already there. <laughs> yeah. It's, yeah. it's important for you guys to be able to support mm -hmm. that just to, to give that as another option. Absolutely. But uh, just in general on 12 on the core side, there's some other neat features too. Fusion yeah. Pools is probably one of the other big things. So we were talking about that earlier. Fusion Pools looks looks pretty neat yeah. and and everyone's looking for ways to to figure out where to apply flash mm -hmm. how much flash to apply uh, and i'm sure you'll have plenty of customers that'll do an all flash box mm -hmm. for some tier sure. one zero some folks, workloads, absolutely right? but if i've got you know one of the neatest things i think about what you guys can do or, or what TrueNAS can do is really make a multi-purpose box mm -hmm. that can handle a bunch of different stuff so yeah. we were already looking at the segra backup use case but while we can run that as a backup. It doesn't have to be exclusively a sure, backup no. appliance. So tell us a little bit about pools and so, what you're doing, or Fusion, sorry. Fusion pools. This so, is very, very important, Brandon. In many ways, TrueNAS Core can be described a little bit as a Swiss Army knife. It can do a lot of things and a lot of different things really well. Um, this is about giving you some new options for how to deploy Flash. Right. So we have a lot of folks who still want spinning disks. They like the economy of spinning disks. Sure. You need the storage, great, but I need some acceleration in some ways. A uh, good example is we see, we've seen customers in the field where they'll have a million files in a directory and it can be a little painful to list that many files at once. You know, just go run LS at the command prompt if you don't mm -hmm. believe me when you have that many files there. So what Fusion Pools brings to the table is you can attach SSDs or NVMe or different fast devices to a spinning disk pool in a special allocation class or Fusion Pool class. And what it does is metadata blocks get stored specifically on that VDEV. So, that means things like you know listing operations, file mm -hmm. lookup, uh, other metadata operations all get redirected to the flash, which means it's faster to work with that, but then you still get the economy of having your spinning disks right. um, actually store the data blocks. And they can additionally store dedupe tables there, uh, small block IO as well. So it just brings some other options to the table for people who yeah, need well, that the, hybrid. The metadata for sure is important because mm -hmm. I don't know how many times, oh gosh, who was it that was giving me some stats? Someone down in Texas one time was saying that their numbers showed that 
90 something percent of the lookups for files mm-hmm. were just that yeah. and not and not actually opening the file but absolutely. just the call of that name modified date absolutely you know, the other attributes there's a lot of clients out there that are just really doing a lot of metadata operations and then uh, occasionally yeah. we might go get the data blocks <laughs> so right <laughs> Yeah, so that one will be really interesting, and uh, we are going to demo that in the live cast, mm-hmm. or if you're listening to this after the live cast, yes. there is a YouTube where we do uh, take a look at uh, Fusion Pools and go do that and look into it. Kevin's already put a pair of SSDs into mm-hmm. our IX box, so we're, we're ready to roll there. Great. And even that operation was quick, right? Just a as fast as I could click anyway. It was just a, a few <laughs> clicks to get it created. All right, so... What else is new in 12? Um, so 12, we added, uh, again, for the core side, we added VPN support in the form of OpenVPN. We've mm-hmm. had this, has been requested for several years now. We have a lot of folks where they maybe don't have the infrastructure on their network side to set up a VPN, but they want access to their files offsite. Well, so. and that's like in this day and age is kind of a brand new world, right? Right. Of, of everyone being remote. Yeah. You may not want to provide access to all the people in New sure. York, but in some limited yeah, in roles. In some right? cases, you want to provide some access. So what we did in 12 is we added open VPN support, but mm-hmm. we added both sides of it. So TrueNAS Core or Enterprise can act as the open VPN server or as a client. So we give you a couple different options for connecting your storage to an open VPN network, and that's debuting in 12. Uh, 12 also added API key functionality. So if you're a heavy user, everything you do in the free NAS or excuse me, the true NAS core UI. That's going to take you forever. It's going to take a while, right? Unprogram your brain. Everything you can do in the UI is API driven. So we're seeing more and more people use the API and write scripts to deploy things, set up things. And so we have API keys that can be handed out for that now as well. That's certainly aligned with what's going on in the DevOps world, Mm -hmm. in the more efficient operations world where they're using whatever. There's hundreds of tools out there mm-hmm. to, to coordinate those activities so that's a natural sort yeah. of flow with with what's happening and we the- have a full rest api and it's also available over web sockets i personally prefer the web socket connection because it's asynchronous and you can send alerts it's pretty cool mm-hmm. but uh it's yeah having that ability is crucial for a lot of uh, users and customers okay um, we've also added uh, support for something upcoming, True Command Cloud. For those who haven't tried True Command yet, that's our single pane of glass. So this lets you move it off site? Yeah, so True okay. Command will be hosted by IX Systems. We're going to be debuting that here in the near future. So it'll be some, a subscription service, and True Command will run on our infrastructure, but then you can securely connect your storage to it and manage it all via that True Command Cloud interface. Now, what's what's the big benefit there? That seems maybe something that might be additive for service providers that have a big distributed. Sure, it's, where it, True Command brings uh, so the free NAS UI is mostly for one admin to log in and right. do work. And of course, if you have a bunch of systems, that can get a little difficult to manage that many. So True Command is a true single pane of glass. It also supports the concept of multiple administrators or RBAC, if you will. Mm-hmm. So you can go in and set up credentials for different admins to access different boxes, monitor or make changes to specific systems. So it's light administrative tasks, but also a lot more introspection, looking at the system, sampling, the visibility, into, visibility the... into what's going on, sure. read and write latencies, and all that good stuff is captured offsite. So you can uh, analyze your system outside of it. So if I run it here in, on our mm-hmm. or against our system, can I also connect off-site systems, or is that really... So True Command can be deployed offline as well. So right. we, we designed it that way intentionally because we have some people who don't want anything exposed to the internet. Mm-hmm. That's great. Understand that. Sure. So once True Command is deployed, it's really agnostic. As long as it has a route to reach the storage, it'll happily run over OpenVPN, WireGuard, you, know, you name it. As long as it can it can reach okay. it, it's good. Okay. So so your the the eventual cloud capacity or the cloud offering just mm-hmm. simplifies some of that. It does. It simplifies the hosting for that. Allows us to host it. You don't have to worry about the upgrades to it. We manage all that, and uh, you know manage it in our cloud infrastructure. Is the upgrade path for that? different than the cadence that you're on with TrueNAS Yeah, True point? Command has its own upgrade cycle, so it tends to come out a little bit more frequent than TrueNAS. Okay. So, um, about every two to three months, we're put, pushing something new out. What what kind of stuff are you rolling into that? Or what so you, where's, one dot, where's the development one focus? 1.3 really is focusing on kind of a dashboard redesign and more management capabilities. So deeper introspection into your data sets, you know, monitoring and managing replication jobs, looking at how many clients you have connected on different protocols. So monitoring, getting graphs of how you know how many SMB sessions are open. Mm-hmm. Those kind of metrics are going to be more the focus of 1.3. We're we're setting the stage for some other stuff that's going to come in 1.4, but uh, for this one, it's definitely much more introspection and visibility into managing things like alerts, you know, monitoring the system health and performance. Mm-hmm. Hmm. 
Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we've got True Command. We talked fusion pools. We talked uh, some security stuff. Any other big highlights in twelve you want to? Oh, I think those are some of the biggest ones. Um, obviously, there's the handful of uh, you know UI improvements, sure. the little bug fixes. You know, I, I think I mentioned for twelve we have graphical enclosure management on the enterprise side. So that's the the pretty visual representation of so you, you can know, your see head, which you know, drive is giving you. You can a see bad which attitude. drive you need to go yank, and that way you don't tell the remote hands to pull the wrong one out, like that kind of stuff. Right. So what's the feedback you're getting on the nightlies are available? Mm-hmm. I assume you've got, knowing the community, you've got a lot of people messing yep. around with it. We do. What sort of feedback are you getting over the The feedback's been weeks? pretty good so far. I mean, we're still nightlies. For those who don't know, that's our pre-beta, pre-alpha in some case instances. Um, beta is still a few weeks out from the time of this recording. Yeah, so what, let's, let's back out the calendar right yeah. now. So the official launch, do we have a date announced for that? Yeah, we just re- released the schedule earlier okay. this week. Uh, October 15th is okay. the date for the official release. Uh, leading up to that, we're getting ready to do beta 1 of 12.0. That's Wait, before uh, the beta though you already put the date out there yeah you you don't worry about being that far away or but yeah you know i mean now it's there it's a target and we're gonna do our best to hit it maybe we're a little early (laughs) maybe we're a little late you know the way 2020 is gone who knows what's next right (laughs) they're about yeah yeah but that's the definitely the target date and we're gonna do our best all right so then the beta is is targeted for when june 30th so right at the end of this month beta one is expected to drop and what's how firm is that beta? So if you're doing nightlies now and have been for a little while, you would expect it to be pretty stable, but there may be bumps and bruises. Yeah. What's the difference in your mind to beta June 30? So the difference is that we've been able to go through our full suite of QA tests, the things we would normally do for TrueNAS Enterprise, for example. So we're going through and validating all the new functionality, validating you know the encryption stuff's working right, KMIP's working right, and writing a whole suite of new tests for any of the new functionality that got added. And you're also uh, taking bugs in from the community. We are right? during the nightly Zoom. And the community, by the way, you guys are great. When you find mm-hmm. issues and send those in, that really helps us. I mean, <laughs> Send the bugs in. They love the bugs. No, I mean, seriously, people run stuff on weird hardware, things we don't even have access to sometimes in our lab. I can't so. possibly imagine some home labber running something on weird hardware. I know, right? It's <laughs> such a crazy idea. <laughs> and, then, and then when you're like, why are you doing that? The answer is typically something like reasons. Like, yeah, or uh, that's what I had lying around, you know, which... <laughs> There's a lot of that. There is a lot of that. Well, that's, no, it's good. That's, it's well, good. that's why we love that community so mm-hmm. much and why we try to give away so much of our gear to mm-hmm. uh, our subreddit, Home Lab Sales, Home Lab, uh, Data Hoarder, Gosh, there's so many of them. Uh, and in fact, we'll be giving away a free NAS, uh, or tr- uh, depending on when it is, it'll be a free NAS or true NAS system from IX uh, soon. So look forward to that. We're going to put together a system and oh, give that away. That'll be great. It will be great. We love giving stuff away because it just, it's funny. We'll do a little NAS giveaway and get 1,500 replies. Oh, wow. 1,500 replies for just a little four bag guy. Yeah. I mean, that's the hunger uh-huh. out there. And I think now, too, during these uh, you know, lockdown and, and sort of un, unstable mm-hmm. times, that now is the best time to, to look at yourself and say, what do I want to do? Sure. To have been doing that, to be introspective sure. and say, if I'm in tech, now's the time where I can get out ahead of my competitors or mm-hmm. people that are fighting for the jobs you know, that as they come back, hopefully, that, mm-hmm. that if I've got these skills and... There's so many courses out there. I'm sure you guys do webinars uh, we and technical do. all the time, right? So there's that content that's always out there to consume. There's uh, You can get yourself a little box, jam some drives in there mm-hmm. and be messing around yeah. and, and kill it a couple times. So Absolutely. that when you know what it looks like, what it feels like, and how, and how to deal with that stuff mm-hmm. when it comes back. And some of those things, like it's not going to fit on a resume but when you sit get an opportunity to sure. sit down and talk with someone or engage with someone on twitter or on, mm-hmm. to be able to have those conversations of hey i did this and this and yeah you know, I, I don't know. I think it's a great time I, to be. I've deployed an enterprise solution at my home lab, and I've learned how Active Directory works and how to manage ZFS and how to set up fusion pools and how to you know, manage SMB. Like, that's, that's Absolutely. really cool. <laughs> so, the other, well, that, that is cool. And one of the things that we like to do, and maybe we haven't done, it just takes a lot of time. As much of it is we love to engage with that community when mm-hmm. they go do that and say, hey, that solution you did was crazy. Write it up for us and we'll publish it on Storage Review. Oh, okay. And so now you're the home lab guy that's messing around with something. You found a cool solution. You mm-hmm. talk about how you're streaming Plex to your Apple TV. Well, probably not Apple TVs. Uh, <laughs> Google Chromecast or something. Uh, I think Plex works on Apple TV. Yeah, yeah but yeah. Apple TV is not really a Plex kind yeah, of guy yeah, solution. Yeah. Um, 
you know, here's how I did this mm-hmm. on a budget of a thousand dollars or whatever, like some like whatever the hook is. We'll publish that all yeah. day long and help spread that message and help people yeah, engage. Those are really popular how tos and articles. We see Absolutely. them on some people on the forum sometimes just post these wild walkthroughs of here's how I set up this huge Plex server. Well, send that example. guy to me because yeah. I because I want to tell that story because the forums are great and the posts on Reddit's great, but they're somewhat ephemeral over mm-hmm. time, right? Mm-hmm. One of the the great things about the storage view site is we index so well, so that when oh, there's yeah. people out there looking for solutions, we've got some stuff on. Uh, picking hypervisors and setting up PFSense and like all these other yep. things that that are really popular in in that in that field. So we love uh, we love engaging with the community. It's, oh, that's great! You just learn so much. You don't do. You? There's just so much knowledge out there, and with the internet and just it's so easy. It's all at your fingertips now. You just got to look. Well, when we redesigned the site, we made the conscious decision to throw away our forums. Like mm-hmm. every tech site since the '90s has been content and forums, or maybe just forums. Like a lot of older technology sure. right and that's worked out if you have a broad enough base you can hang on to and have those conversations mm-hmm. uh, but we just we scrapped that whole thing set up a subreddit and said well, well let's go, go to where the people are and then you know be able to have those oh, conversations that's really cool yeah it's worked it's worked out we're up at almost 3100 on our subreddit oh nice so yeah, i'm a big reddit user myself for those who have seen me i'm usually posting or help trying to help out folks in the free nas channels yeah the free nas channel i think they've got nearly 30,000 yeah. subs on that. It's, it's pretty, pretty active. active. Yeah. It's pretty darn active. So, and I try to keep an eye on it. So apologies if I don't get to you personally, but <laughs> I try and lurk and at least we'll, get as much we'll answers as Chris's I can. Home phone number at the yeah, end of the podcast. Not so much. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean, we love the community and I love the, what you guys are doing from an open source, from an enablement standpoint of all these things to, to drive the technology through. I think the rebrand makes a ton of sense. Mm-hmm. We talked about, um, you know, sort of, the potential negative connotation of the word free. So yeah. going to true NAS yeah. core makes a ton of sense mm-hmm. and driving that through and, uh, and just helping, helping it practitioners get smarter and, and able to engage on this. And I think it's fun. You know, I don't have the time for it, but I can see how it would be fun to have oh, access yeah. to nightlies and pull that down. Yeah. So when you get to beta mm-hmm. June 30th, there or about, yeah. You'll keep doing nightlies after that, or will yeah, yeah. Stop? So there's there's still a nightly train that runs after that, and that will eventually become RC one when the next release goes out the door, or beta two. We're that's still up in the air if we're going to end up doing a beta two or not. Just depends on the feedback, honestly, from beta one. So well, if the, you have to do beta two, then you've failed. Not that we failed, but you know, <laughs> stuff stuff. It's a complicated system, you know. If there's a big enough problem, we're going to put just, a beta two out. I'm going to be watching for that. Uh, yeah, if I see keep a beta me two. Honest, yeah, keep gonna, me honest. I'll call you. We're hoping we don't have to do a beta two, but we just build it into the schedule because historically we have done a few of them. So, so when will you? Okay, so then we get all the way to October and twelve goes out, mm-hmm. and then immediately you're on to twelve one. Yeah, so the, then the nightlies would basically become the twelve one train at that point, or what's going to become the twelve one train, you know, twelve to sixteen months after that. Okay, it, is that so? You've got a pretty long cadence then on between your major releases. releases. We're still releasing updates, so twelve dot come out, and usually within the first couple months, you get a twelve dot u one right. to you know, the, you know the usual updates, and those will be a handful of bug fixes. Occasionally, we slip a little feature improvement in there, just depending on how much. If it much, was close, maybe they didn't it, quite. Make if it was the, close, or if it's safe to put in, you know, and it is a huge improvement to usability, then yeah, we slip a few of those in. We try to mainly focus on bug fixes, though, for right. those U releases. Yeah, well, that, that's pretty typical. Yeah. For, you want it to mature software. and stabilize at that yeah, point. Yeah. So, all right, so now there's another product. Yeah. Okay, so we talked TrueNAS Core, TrueNAS Enterprise. We True Command even slipped its way. Yep, yep. It's dirty little paws into this conversation. <laughs> I snuck uh, it in when you weren't looking. <laughs> TrueNAS Scale, you talked about, so there have been hints about it in mm-hmm. the community because you've had something out there on GitHub for a little while, and yeah. if you kind of knew where to poke around, you could find it. And then you put out, was the first thing your actual uh, forums post a couple days ago? Yeah, that was the first official. official co- I, I had put it. something out right around the beginning of the year just as, a little tease, if you, I'll call it a tease, as to because it's hard. We're an open source company, open source project, so things slip into the Git repos, and sometimes you can't help that. But some right. people see it and go, "That's weird. Why did they add a Debian 
skimma file uh, that doesn't make any sense right. why did that end up in the repo and then they go on reddit and they have a conversation yeah about then they have a conversation to, then 100 people on? reply to it and next thing you know people are asking questions so and so then you have to make an answer yeah so, so we basically teased it a little bit that we're working on something new in the labs back true nest scale true nest scales what the we officially now, right? announced this week all so, right so a lot of people were excited about mm-hmm. it some people i was teasing you before were aggravated by it what's the fundamental action that's taking place so we're basically we're building our next generation storage device and TrueNAS scale is going to offer some new capabilities that we haven't historically had on TrueNAS core or enterprise scale out you know hence the word scale for yeah, the name was, yeah. was good. good job Morgan. pretty clever huh <laughs> but anyway that's that's the big draw for it but it's going to be based on debian as opposed to bsd and that, another reason is bringing uh, linux containers native linux containers to the table uh, KVM as a hypervisor, just a whole different tool chain that we can import. We have a lot of users who've been asking for that for years. It's probably one of the most most requested features actually in FreeNAS and now TrueNAS Core has been native Docker support. Yeah, the container support is big. Now KVM mm-hmm. is the is the intimation then that this it could be a hyper converged infrastructure, a true hyper converged infrastructure. We have hints of that in the existing TrueNAS core. We have VMs now. It's mm-hmm. using Beehive on FreeBSD, and that's working. KVM's got a lot of different features and abilities that we want to be able to tap into and use to expand our repertoire, if mm-hmm. you will. But uh, you know, there's. A lot more things to come on that, so we'll be announcing more. We'll be rolling out nightlies of this here in the next three to four weeks, we're expecting. Okay. Um, so, you know, obviously the word is out now. People can go look at the repos. They can contribute. They can get involved and see where we're going, and we'll be posting more details on that here in the coming months. Yeah, I mean, a hyper-converged offering it is neat. I mm-hmm. mean, given the vein of what you guys have done historically. Sure. Um, let's see, scale... Computing runs on KVM. They've got a nice uh, HCI solution. Mm-hmm. Nutanix obviously started out that way. Mm-hmm. So there's some... Uh, actually, Red Hat, I think, is is using that too. Yeah. Anyway, there's plenty of pedigree sure. on KVM for doing things For like doing this. those kind of things. What do you... Do you think you'll see a lot of multi-node... Or is there a demand? You're seeing demand for a lot of multi nodes. We've like had that? we have the requests and we've seen the need for it. Obviously, we're a scale up file system right now, and right. ZFS scales way up. You can mm-hmm. get pretty darn large. But at some point, we have folks who want to be able to scale out and add more nodes and you know build the cluster out, so to speak. So we've seen folks doing that homebrew, who are like, "Wow, it'd be great if TrueNAS could do that natively." Right. And so that's what we're bringing to the table. So that changes the game, though, from an IX perspective, a little bit on hardware, right? Because you're not exactly a hardware company, but obviously you have mm-hmm. appliances and yeah. you support those and, and all that sort of thing. The SKU count probably has to, to change. Well, we're, we're going to be allowing scale to run on our existing product family. So okay. it'll be something you will be able to upgrade to should you wish. Is that only on the multi-controller units? Or? No, it can run on the single controllers okay. as well, potentially. Okay. So... Yeah. And so, what's the calendar that you've committed to on that one? We're just saying anything. we're just saying uh, early 2021 for okay. kind of a release date. It's going to have to go through the same cycle that 12 is. We're going to do nightlies for a while. There's still a lot of features to port over and get working on Linux. So we got our work cut out for us. I mean, we're nowhere near the the uh, finish line yet. But, but enough. Uh, there was enough information out there where you wanted to get ahead of it. Well, catch up or get ahead a little people bit. People <laughs> were figuring it out on their own. I, I saw some the stuff posted at the forums and on Reddit where people were look, found some of the build repos and oh hey that's weird. How come there's a Docker file well, in here and you know what what is this? Uh, <laughs> well, I think some people might have been worried that. Well, does this mean that the existing builds are dead? No, and that's not at all. Not the case. Not right? at all. TrueNAS Core, TrueNAS Enterprise, those you know have a good future ahead of them. We have a lot of folks who love those products and maybe don't know or, or don't need scale out, don't necessarily need Docker or KVM, but they just want rock solid storage. Yeah, you know, so that product's going to keep on continue continue going. So twelve one, etc. Good. Yeah, that, I mean that was easy. Yeah, we're trying to make every you know. Keep both of our communities happy in that sense, you know, bring some new things to the table, but mm-hmm. also keep our existing rock solid products uh, continuing to grow and evolve as time goes on. Yeah, I mean, that's the the upside downside with such an active and vibrant mm-hmm. community is that they're extremely supportive and oh, loyal, yeah. but also yeah, want to be informed. And that's that's cool. I mean, and that's one of the things that even we try to find the balance of with you know, all the outreach, even on Reddit or social media or all of it, like we want to support everyone that asks any question mm-hmm. of like, what should I buy? Or, you know, what, sure. I've got a problem with this. And 
Um, but it can also be uh, trying at times to, to be as responsive as you want to be. <laughs> it is tough you know, in some sense. You might be providing too much free tech support, you know, helping people di- you know, diagnose their crummy hardware. But we, we love our community. We want to help out in every way we can. So that's why I spend a lot of my off hours on Reddit, on my phone usually, just yeah. answering questions where I can. <laughs> Well, it's, it's so easy now. You it can is. be walking around and you know, jam out a response. Yeah, especially and, if I see something, I'm like, oh, I know how to fix that. Here yeah. you go. I hope that helps you out. So from a IX perspective, how do, how do you guys, how does the company view itself in relationship to these software packages, in relationship to the hardware that you release, the support that you offer for enterprise customers? What What is IX in a, in a, in a sentence or in a notion? Well... I think our motto is powered by open source. We're driven by open source. That really is in our blood and our veins. That's part of our ethos as a company. So we're really big into trying to be responsible open source citizens with uh, not only the products that we build, you know, FreeNAS and now TrueNAS, but even the components that make up that. There's a lot of open source bits that go into TrueNAS, that go into FreeNAS. And so we try to contribute back where we can. You know, we're not taking stuff and closed sourcing it. We're trying to make all the products better that we have to touch as part of that. And then, of course, we're building our own appliances. We're able to put our special IX touch on it, provide some neat value that you can take a really rock solid software defined storage product and then pair it with some awesome hardware and end up with something that you're proud to put in your rack at work and go recommend to your boss. Yeah. And then... Well, that, at that scale, and then even the the minis, if you oh, yeah. want to, if you want to get something small for Absolutely. a little office or to, to mess around with in yeah. your your home. A lab. mini on your desk is great. You know, you get all this enterprise functionality in a little tiny box that's quiet. I mean, that's pretty fantastic. Not too bad. All right, so we covered off on core, TrueNAS Core twelve enterprise scale. True, we got it. Did we get it all? I think we got it all. I, and all the key updates. This yeah, was, I, it sounds. I think we. It's been a busy week, but I think that hit about everything. All right, now. <laughs> so so we we plowed through that, and uh, now we're going to abandon this podcast, switch into live TV yep. mode, and uh, and show show this stuff off. So yeah, this is gonna be fun. Yeah, I'm I'm excited. I'm so. Uh, I guess thankful seems like a weird word, but I am thankful that you you journeyed up from Knoxville oh. and, and came up here. It's so fun to re-engage in a professional way. I, I was surprised you guys were this close, to be honest. I didn't know you what were... What was the drive up here? Four, uh, four and a half hours? Yeah. It wasn't bad. Yeah, yeah well, it's funny because I pulled into the, the parking lot. I was running a little late today with kids stuff, and I was thinking, gosh, I wonder if Chris is here. Yeah, stormtrooper sticker on the back of the car. Yeah, yeah he made you know, it. That's my car. <laughs> <laughs> I always, I can always spot that guy. Uh, or when uh, uh, Rick uh, comes down from Veeam, he's got, uh, he's up in Columbus, mm-hmm. and uh, he's got a Ricketron sticker on the back of his car. Nice. The nerds always have, and I mean, we have our little clues. Affection. I got my little Unix bumper sticker. Colon W saves, which is a VI yes. reference. Yes, for, I saw that one yeah. too. Well, that was great. Well, thanks for coming in for the podcast. This oh, you're is welcome. fun. Thanks for listening and or watching. We've got the interactive video up on YouTube, the podcast through all the normal channels, iTunes, Spotify, wherever oh, you yeah. get your podcasts. And uh, uh, thanks for tuning in. Cool. Thank you.